Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've done haul videos, but today we have a special haul from the San Francisco International Pen Show, and I do hope you enjoyed watching the previous video where I share with you my f second time being at the pen show, also my first time being part of the event as a workshop teacher. I had so much fun. It was great to meet some of you at the pen show. And of course, I also did my shopping which was kind of um, tricky because I was all over the place during the three days but sometime between Friday morning and Sunday morning I was able to cop a lot of things that I was looking for after like numerous trips around the ballroom and the foyer so here on the left we have stationary items and then on the right I do have my ink loot which I'll tell you more about later and obviously there is a new pen that is from the pen show so without further ado let's get started I also want to share that I did uh, an SF pen show insert journal kind of thing and I'll be sharing a little flip through towards the end of the video so do um, check it out and make sure to watch until the end Okay, we're gonna go through some of the tiny things here. So there were a lot of things that I was eyeing on and one thing that I did um, love about the San Francisco International Pen Show is that there are stationary adjacent items. So apart from fountain pens in general, inks, you can also find stationary paper goods and accessories that would sort of complement your fountain pen writing experience. Starting off with, well, just wanted to flex my ID because this is gonna go into my journal. So I helped Everyday Express Co. Um, with her booth. So thanks so much to Christine for having me. So we have a really nice um, memorabilia. I love keeping these lanyards, so I'm gonna probably hang them um, on my desk where I can see them. This is the little bunch of stationery I got. So this year, Eric Small Things and Cute Things from Japan were there, which was a delight because I have been following Cute Things from Japan for a while and I met Ayako of Cute Things from Japan in Bungo Joshi last 2019. It was like four years. So it was a treat to have them there. And I also met Eric of Eric Small Things to which she gave me a really cute coaster. I think it's a coaster or, or a board, but it's super cute because she made uh, San Francisco centric items. Lol, I already used the Golden Gate Bridge because I had to um, basically journal. So these are the sticker sheets I got. So we have a Hello San Francisco themed sticker and then this one is like a have a nice trip general traveling one i particularly love the fountain pen here very cute and the window view um sticker and i want to thank uh Kwe or cat of mirai cat i met her and she was the one doing the cashier so she gave me this thank you so much second one is i met the lovely mai of paper treats so i cut up her packaging because i'm gonna put it in my journal and then i got this i think this is a sticker so i'm gonna put it also in my journal so this is a sticker so mai sells a lot of stationery and also like curated items that's why they're called paper treats there's like bags of themed items um which was really well curated i love it there were like things from oedo letterpress and also um if you like melon soda there's like a liter literal bag of melon soda stationery or coffee um cafe tea and all these little um nice niche stationery um themes but i ended up getting um a washi sticker sheet this is cafe so predictable because i love coffee and i just love the color scheme here this one was an envelope that rickshaw sent me cheryl sent me um it actually has all the stickers but I already put them in another envelope i thought it'd be nice to share because i definitely want to cut up the some of the stamps and put them on my journal as well these ones I got from Judy of Tokubetsu Memories. So I was so obsessed with these ones. Um, it's from Yuying Illustration. Look, look how fluffy that is. That is like, that is too cute. I mean, that is too adorable. I also got 
this one which was adorable next up we're going to be looking at my rickshaw pen cases so some of you know i do have a rickshaw pen case it's the van gogh starry starry night one uh, job gave it to me last year at the pen show when i met him for the first time and we hung out in uh, san francisco so this year he told me to buy the sunflowers one because he got one so i was like okay fine maybe i i need to get another 3 pen koozie so i did and um actually one of the pens is the new pen so i'll show you show you later what it looks like but it's pretty much the same it's just houses the same um three pen situation and i stick by my three pen rule because of drew of goulet pens he's like Oh, you have to have three pens and that's all you need. So I always have a three pen koozie whenever I'm traveling. Um, another additional purchase I got was the Pen Show exclusive, which is the SF Pen Show 2023 design, which was designed by Mark himself of Rickshaw Bags, who I got to meet at the Pen Show. And we also did a workshop at the HQ a few days later. This actually came with a lanyard and it's fastened here because I was going around the Pen Show and usually there are a lot of people who come in and ask me to sign their books, their zines, their journals. So it was just time to have a lanyard. So I put in a Sharpie or a signing pen and I just wore this the entire time. I think I got it in Saturday and I was very proud of my decision because every time now I have events, I am bringing this with me because it's just great. And also I love the pop of orange. It's just really nice and it's a nice way to commemorate the show as well. Next up in Traveler's Factory, I got this one, which is adorable. This is the Traveler's Hotel keychain. I also um, decided to get the half trip insert, which is what you're seeing here with uh, MD Paper White. I got um, a sampler pack from Yamamoto Paper. Funny story was when I was checking this out with Kay, so this was after my Saturday workshop. Literally, the Yamamoto paper booth was empty. There were only like maybe five of these there. So we were picking which um, paper to get. I think Kay got something lighter and I got something that's a bit thicker but I wanted to have a bit of weight. So this is 68 GSM and it's called Light Force. And two things, I love rounded corners on paper. The second thing is I just need paper that's this small so I can write notes to friends and use my fountain pen because I feel like it's a hit or miss situation. So I ended up getting this and I'm so excited to use them for my notes or to-dos or notes to friends or messages. Last thing for stationery is the At The Pen Show stamp set from CH of Everyday Explorers Co. I was so hyped seeing this when we went to her office and she's like, look, I'm going to show you the pen show stamps because we were talking about doing a pen show exclusive stamp set. And I was like, yeah, you should totally do it because everyone's going to cop that like it's going to sell like hotcakes to which it did because by Saturday morning, I think there were only three left from the pile that she had made. So hopefully she'll make more next year. But just to show you, here's what it looks like. It's a very compact. This is my hand for scale. If you love going to pen shows in general, this is a great um, stamp set to have. And personally, my favorite is the pen show workshop because obviously I documented my, so meta, but I documented my workshop. So as you can see, it's very much well loved and well used. Last on this pile, which I keep forgetting that I actually got, is so last year a couple of friends were had bought the crab pen holder, so I was super FOMO. And I was like, I think I want one. I was debating on getting the green one, but then I'm kind of like so basic. I was like, uh, the green one doesn't really match the actual color of the crab. So I was like, okay, I'll just get the orange one. But I don't know if I want to keep this actually or gift it, but it's so adorable. This is from Mido, which was on the same um, lane as uh, CH Booth. So I said hi to Mido and so funny. They were like, hi, Abby, when's your workshop going to be? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys know me. Um, so yeah, it is a crab pen holder. Um, let me try it out for you for a sec. Boop. Oh my God, that is so cute. That is so cute. 
So yeah, it's very handy, but I also did get a pen rest later, which I'll show you. But obviously this is the more budget-friendly option because this was only 10 bucks. So that's it for the stationary part, and now let's head on to the pen and inks. The funny story is I didn't plan on getting any pen or this much inks, but here we are, and I'm gonna do a quick story time. The first ink that I've always wanted to get for this year's pen show was the Kobe number no. 8 Arima Amber. Last year at the pen show, I was already looking at this and I'm like, ah, I'm not gonna get it, whatever. And then the day that I wasn't there, Sunday, I asked Job to get it for me and he's like, ah, it's all sold out. The Kobe booth is wiped out. And at the time, actually, I wasn't really... I only had one bottle of Kobe ink, so I didn't really know that much about the brand. And then this year, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get one. Might as well get one. True enough, I bought it on Friday, and then the next day, everyone was looking for it, and it was already sold out. So I'm very happy about my purchase. So um, this was the only ink I purchased, actually. So I'm gonna show you some swatches later. But I remember is pretty much what you'd expect me to have in my ink stash which is a nice amber color and it's like orangey brown and a bit of camel. During the workshops, I was um, I was hyping up Kobe inks basically. I'm not paid to say this, I just love their ink. My good friend Kara got me into Kobe inks. She gave me a bunch of samples during the pandemic and she's like, Abby, they have great inks. I was telling my students, guys, you have to check out the Kobe booth because their inks are fab. So. Everyone did check it out and actually the micro green also sold out. So I think that was partly my fault um, I basically ink abled everyone because I used the micro green for the journal spreads We used for the demo for the workshops Sunday morning. I was talking to the Kobe people. I was really shy. I don't really like to be all networky. I feel like I have to like gauge that part of me and then on Sunday I was like feeling social because it's the last day and I, I would probably not see everyone after like a year So I went up to the Kobe team and I'm like hi So, you know, I'm Abby and I'm like I have been hyping your pens up and inks to all of my students That that's the reason why a lot of your inks have been sold out and they were so sweet They're like, oh, thank you so much for promoting our brand and I'm like, yeah, because because I feel like not a lot of creators or shops carry Kobe. As far as I know, Yoseka does carry, so I loved seeing the huge collection at their store. And also in, in Germany, Papier und Stiff also carries it, but I'm like, it's kind of hard to find, at least from my side of the world. And then obviously in Japan, it's easier to find, and also, um, yeah, I feel like it's not being talked enough and I feel like it's a good contender if you love pilot inks and sailor inks But need more range of colors that are more um, Accessible so they're like, oh, you know as a thank you, please get two bottles of ink on us. I'm like What? So this is why I have two Kobe inks right here. So super thank you to the folks at Kobe They are the sweetest and I'm gonna show you the, these first because I also got my pen at the Kobe booth. So it's Nagasawa slash Kobe, but the inks are called Kobe Ink. So when you go to the booth, they're gonna hand you this um, extensive color map. It's either this one or the fan. So I was joking, I was like, I'm a fan girl. So this one gives you a, con a concrete idea of what ink range they have in terms of color and color types and they have a lot of shading inks as well. Um, personally, it's a bit tricky to deal with in terms of the numbers so you have to kind of memorize the numbers because the only way you get to see it on the packaging is through the numbers right here at the back. Which for me is actually not a problem, but I guess it's tricky for some to get into, but I have my favorites. I want to probably at some point in my life find a way to test out all these Kobe inks. But so the color map has um, ranges of colors like organized together like this, but then inside there's the chronological one. So my personal favorites are number eight, 
which is Arima Amber, number 15, Michael Green, number 22, Shinkaichi Gold. So the one that I got, though, is something that I usually won't get, but this was recommended by one of the folks at the Kobe booth. He was like, you should get this ink. It's a really bestseller ink. And this is called, let me see what it's called. But it's a blue teal color, and I feel like it's an homage to my teal era, which I don't think I've ever talked about before. It's number 44, Sumaura Seaside Blue. So it's bluish teal. Actually, Christine loves this ink so much, and I love it because it's not quite green, it's not quite blue. And then the other one doesn't look like a Kobe box, but it actually is. And the funny thing was, I asked the Kobe guy. So on Saturday, there was a guy who spoke like really fluent English. And I'm like, okay, what is this thing? And he's like, oh, you know, it's still Kobe, but it's targeted for women. I'm like, what? Yeah, because when you open the packaging, there's like a flower. I'm like, okay. Because <laughs> obviously, I didn't know that much about this. But okay, to be fair. It does open up as a flower, so fine, fair enough. And the packaging looks a bit different. I'm obsessed with it, honestly. Look at that. That is pretty. That is so pretty. So this one is a new series. It's called Onomatopoeia, which is directly what this translates to. And this one is in the shade Casa Casa, which is a nice um, color-changing greenish brown. I would say the resemblance reminds me of Sailor Shikiori Rikyucha, which is like very tea, um, hojicha style color. And I really like it. It's actually inked in one of my pens already. And this is also from Kobe. It was actually um, a bit more expensive. This is $30 and then this is $25. But, but, but on Sunday, I mean, Sunday is a bit more tricky because Sunday, the ink selection is a bit more limited. But on Sundays, it's BOGO, which is crazy. It's buy one, get one because they really want to wipe off the entire stash of inks because obviously they don't want to bring it home. So this is BOGO. So when it's BOGO, you can also get the Automatopia, which I think is fabulous. So it's hard not to get anything. I think a lot of the friends, um, who were roaming, roaming around the pen show got, got like the BOGO. Like I remember Jessica got one. Christine also got one. Um, everyone was looking at the BOGO pile basically. It's hard not to do that. Another ink that I got that I've been wanting to get but I didn't have time to get. So, so I want to thank Sherry for giving me this ink. She's an angel. She was like, do you want one? I'm like, yes. So this is the Colorverse San Francisco Pen Show special ink. And as far as I know, you have to complete a set of challenges or like do some stamping to actually get this. But obviously I couldn't do that because I was at the pen show being all teacher mode and meeting people. And I was basically all over the place. So this is the pen show ink. Um, I did give samples to a couple of friends. It's the Golden Gate Bridge, and I personally love the Golden Gate Bridge, so I wanted to get one for myself. So this one is really gorgeous. It's like a nice reddish pink orange. It's a bit different than the amber, so it, it comes off really red on paper. Just imagine what the Golden Gate Bridge looks like as an ink. So. Thank you so much to Sherry for giving me this bottle. Next up, I went to the ink testing station area and at that area, it was crowded for good reason because Bungu Box and Toyuka Craft were situated by that area and I think Friday morning there was a long queue because everyone wanted to Yuko craft boxes. I'm pretty simple. I just wanted to have a look at their pen rest. I looked at it for several occasions and I finally caved in on Sunday because it was still available. And the funny thing is, I think I already posted about them the day before. Like I went around the, the area and like posted on Instagram. And Toru of uh, Toyuka Craft was like, you're are you ABC, like this this account on Instagram? I'm like, yes. And then he goes to Bungu Box and tells Bruce of Bungu Box, she's an influencer. It's so funny, but um, thank you for um, 
acknowledging me and my presence but I ended up getting a one pen rest here this is the one made with Japanese wood I was eyeing either this one or the darker shade one but I was like I feel like I'm a light wood shade girly so this one is the one that I got I mean obviously look at the baskets I use it's pretty much light wood finish and the moment of truth is I want to share with you a little story about how I decided to get this pen I've already seen this pen several times um, I went to the pen show last year I saw it but it was a bit hard to look because that was Saturday and was super crowded and I just didn't want to like buy a pen on impulse and then um, I think I was lurking around Yoseka stationery website a few months ago and I also saw this I'm like I don't know what it looks like in person I'm kind of picky I like seeing pens in person before buying them so that goes to show for all of the pens I got and it's usually not a I buy I go there I buy and call it a day I always try to like go back which is what happened to my Sailor Manio nut story last year and then this time I got this on Sunday I was like you know what it's not yet open for the public. I think it opens at 10 and 8 o'clock we already set up at our booths. And I'm like, okay, it was 9.30. I had to decide if I had to get it. Funnily enough, um, that area was where the Kobe, the Nagasawa Kobe booth is by the door. So when you're by the door, a lot of people pass by that, that door. And I think three people already told me to buy this. Like... Jessica asked me to buy Ariel of Toast Ariel slash Toasty was like you should totally get that and then April also saw it and he's like she's like you have to get this get that and then I asked Job to come over I'm like because he was at the DRC booth I'm like Job come here tell me which which one which nib should I get and he was like medium I'm like I don't know if I want to commit to a medium so I ended up getting my go-to nib which is medium fine but I was debating whether to get the pink gold or white gold. No, not white gold, yellow gold, but in the end, the pink gold really spoke to me because it's not too rose gold. I feel like rose gold could go too pink, and I'm not keen on that, so I ended up getting this one, this beauty right here. I'm going to give you a closer look. So this is the Nagasawa Gearske, which I found out from Kimberly of all the hobbies that Gearske means gear for pro gear, ske for skeleton. So Nagasawa Gearske 21K MF nib in pink gold. And it has a really lovely finial. Then um, it also already has a converter. There's also really nice nib detail. And then um, there is a converter included. And this is also my first 21K nib pen. And I'm in love with it. It's really, really great. And the weight is pretty good. So that is my favorite purchase. It's really pretty. I'm very happy with this. And I'm going to put it in my three pen koozie. So now we're done with the haul, I want to show you what's inside my pen show journal. I definitely want to do this for every pen show that I go to or every event. It's like a really nice event recap. So I decorated it with some stickers from my stash. This is from my PET tape. Um, this Everyday Explorers and then this is from Rickshaw. This one was like a little cover I did based on some happy mail people have given me. Just some random bits and pieces and obviously everything is still color coded. This one was given to me by one of my students, analog underscore planner. One of the things I also got from Paper Treats is this washi tape, which is so pretty. And then some more stickers. So during the pen show, I love that everyone exchanged stickers. I felt like that was the whole vibe. So I brought out my write on fountain pen stickers. And then I also asked a couple of friends to write in. One of the highlights for me of the pen show was getting to spend a lot of time with Job. And we had a lot of our Tito Boy moments. After the pen show, every evening we talk about our crazy dreams and chaotic Capricorn um, conversations basically so it was really really fun um, I also went to the ink testing station I think I doubled the ink so I had to cover it with tape I some stickers from people I met um, at some point I was able to move this journal insert around 
during one of my workshops so there were a lot of messages here from students which was great I wish I was able to do that more um, these are just some tester inks that I tried with pens and I just basically incorporated a lot of elements and this is probably my favorite page because I asked Christine to write a message and also this is her and me at the booth also on the right side I was able to stamp at Eric's booth Drew got to hang out with Drew again also got to meet Franz Franz and he's now my kuya He's great, uh, super supportive, and he's been such a troop with helping me um, organize the workshops. So I really asked them to write stuff. More photos. This is the Baum Kuen team. Oh my gosh, I got to meet some of them. I met Emil, Eunice, Emil's partner, AC, and yeah, of course, Kay's there, and also Kay's partner, Sergio, who I met in Chicago. I'm like, oh my gosh, BK team. I also met, I also saw. Um, Neil, Ashley, and me of Yoseka, I'm like, guys, what are you doing here? It's so fun to see them there. I kept telling them when I hung out with them in New York to go to um, the pen show, so I'm so glad that they ended up going, even just for a few hours. This is Kay, this is Franz and Job. This is Lei, I met Lei at the pen show. She runs Manila Pen Show, and she is lovely. And this is Christine, and then this is Koe, Ayako, and Eric. So here, Kimberly wrote a really sweet message, and she's like, I'm gonna write it here because you stamped the inky converter stamp here, and Angela is my pen show little sister. So I love that. More photos. This is Kimberly. I also met the lovely Michelle. Michelle is great. We went to, we went shopping window shopping i think in friday on friday it was so lovely to meet her she, she's so sweet i also got to meet christina who works at trc who's also filipino so this is my little filipino family so adorable um i also did another trial run at testing inks so this is my attempt and these were all from kimberly's tray i didn't sort everything i didn't test everything already i just tested the ones i was curious about Personally, I love the Sailor California one and the Diamine Suman. Um, more messages from Sherry who gave me the pen show ink and she brought her lovely doggo Henry who was so adorable. And then this one is from Lei. And also one of the highlights was getting to meet Cheryl of Rickshaw. She is amazing. And I'm so glad that we crossed paths finally because we've just been talking via um, email and iMessage and it was so lovely to meet her and spend time with her throughout the weekend and also at the rickshaw workshop the rickshaw video will come out really soon and going back to the inks i mentioned earlier here are the swatches so this is the arima amber and this is the color ver verse pen show ink the golden gate bridge so it's a bit different you know it's like orange and then reddish this is the Sumaura Seaside Blue from Kobe, which is a really nice um, tealish color. These ones are from um, Christine. She bought some inks as well. And then this is the Onomatopoeia Casa Casa, which I really love. And it does seem a bit similar to the Flax and Troublemaker Sage Green. Sage Green. This is a new collab that just came out, but I like the Onomatopoeia preferably on my end. So I'm very happy with that. So yeah, that is basically the end of my pen show journal. I'm just gonna show you a quick writing demo so you can see how smoothly this writes. I mean, it's just smooth, like really smooth. I mean, I love my 14K, but this 21K nib really changed a lot for me. And I'm so excited to put this on my rotation. As you can see, the ink is already running out because I didn't ink that much. So I'm already on the tail end of deciding what to ink here. I'll probably ink it with Arima Amber. So that is it for this very chatty haul video. I do hope you enjoyed looking through my journals and also looking through the things that I bought at the pen show. And if you went to the pen show, let me know what your personal favorite purchase was. I'll see you on the next video. Always be creating. Bye!